Hello, everybody. It's lovely for me to be here today. It gives you a kind of weird feeling to know that so many thousands of children are watching us all over the country too. So if any of you are going to be yawning or picking your nose, remember many, many children will be watching you. It's, it's weird for me too, because when I was your age, I knew I very badly wanted to be a writer. How many of you want to be writers? Anybody? Put your hands up if you do. Right. Well, I used not only to write lots of stories, but I used to fantasize about what it would be like to be a famous writer. And when I used to go to school, I had to go about half an hour's walk to school, I used to pretend that I was being interviewed or giving talks about my books. And it's so weird now that many, many years later, these things are actually happening in real life for me. Now, it was the only thing I was any good at when I was at school, writing. Um, I was totally hopeless at maths. Anybody here in the audience here really, really useless at any kind of arithmetic? Anybody? Yes. Well, I was the sort of person that when we had problems, when we had those problems where, you know, you have three men in a field and it takes them seven days to dig a hole and it says, how long will it take 15 men? I would never get to grips with the actual mathematical problem. I would just think, why are these men digging a hole in the field? What is it for? Is it a swimming pool? And everybody else would be writing down the answer. And I never worked out how to do it. So I wasn't very good at most school subjects. I was awful, also awful at any kind of sporty thing. Anybody here really hate it when you do rounders or netball or PE at all? Oh, no, really sporty kids. I was useless. I was reasonably popular at school. But when it came to picking teams, everybody would say, well, I'll have anybody but not Jackie because I couldn't catch a ball, I couldn't throw a ball, I couldn't run fast. And it was pretty humiliating. So it was wonderful that I could write stories. And sometimes the teachers liked my stories so much, they would actually call me to the front of the classroom and I'd have to read aloud my story. And in year five, I had my most favorite teacher of all, Mr. Townsend. He was so lovely. And um, he gave us all writing projects to do. And I said solemnly that I wanted to write a novel. And he didn't laugh at me. He said, good for you, Jacqueline, go ahead with it. And you know, I have still got it. Here it is, it's falling to bits. And it's got a very silly title. It's called The Maggots. That was the surname of this great big family. I love to write about big families because I was an only child. And I thought what fun it would be to have lots and lots of brothers and sisters. Um, now, I called this a novel. But as you can see, it's only about... 14, 15 pages long. But um, I thought I'd written a really, really long book. And this family is pretty similar to the sort of families I write about nowadays, because there's a mum and a dad who have got all sorts of worries and problems. I've actually drawn little frowny lines on the mum's forehead. And they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven children. There's a teenager who's um, very full of herself and stays out late with her boyfriend and worries her mum terribly. There's a rather earnest girl with glasses who loves reading. There's a girl with plaits who's desperate to be an actress. There are identical twins who keep playing tricks on people and get up to mischief. There's a shy little boy who gets teased. And there's a very fierce, funny little girl with an awful lot of curly hair. 
Now, do these actually remind you of any of the characters I write about now? Even at the age of nine or ten, I was writing the sort of stories that I write nowadays. My writing style, though, certainly was a bit embarrassing, and I would blush if I read on any of it aloud to you, because it's really not that good, but it shows I was trying.